Welcome to the Quick Flicks channel. I'm Alexander, here for you short movie retellings from your best friend. Let's get started. Dude, imagine this, a guy wakes up in this totally bizarre place, like he has no clue how he ended up there, or where the heck his phone is. And then BAM! A voice behind the door tells him to chill out, saying he's been drugged and is gonna feel crappy for days. But hold on, it's time to work, so they bid him farewell. Crazy, right? So this guy Joe, he's trying to figure things out when this slot on the door opens and food packets drop in. He's desperate, asking the invisible guard for help, saying he's got a pregnant wife who needs him. But nope, the guard's like, stay away, dude. Joe doesn't listen, gets a serious wrist blow, and he's there crying, saying he doesn't deserve this mess. Later, Joe gets all MacGyver with his tie, explores the place, grabs some food and water. Just as he's about to dig into his grub, a siren blares. And guess what? Mord Corporation's AI voice is like, Welcome to a training program, buddy. You're gonna be the best version of yourself. Joe's like, Hold up, what's happening? But his neighbor's like, Dude, keep it down. No answers here. Then there's this countdown to midnight. Joe's confused, trying to find out the interlocutor's name. And they're like, Names? Do we even have him here? Next thing, screams from behind the walls, someone telling Joe to shut up, and the mysterious voice says, Except this is Mord, get some sleep, tomorrow's gonna be your longest day. Joe's sitting there, and suddenly, a melodic whistle, a man begging not to do something, and promising to exceed the plan. But he gets dragged away, and Joe's covering his ears, trying to shut out the voices. The AI's all, it's for your peace of mind. The sun rises, whistle sounds again. A voice congratulates Joe on a beautiful day. Cameras must be clean, or punishment's coming. His neighbor's back, saying it was just a motivational speech, advising Joe to obey orders. Joe's tossing trash into a nasty hole, notices something weird under his feet, pulls on it, and bam. It's hair, and beneath it, a human skull. He screams, but the neighbor's like, people die here, man. Get used to it. Reminds Joe of the contract he signed with Mard, fine print, price to pay. The sooner he gets into the rhythm, the easier his days. Just when Joe's trying to wrap his head around all this, the AI voice kicks in again. And Joe's had enough. He's shouting about his 10 years with the corporation. Demands release. But Mord's like, nope, qualification enhancement seminar time. Joe's productivity's down, so new job. Turning a mill from 6 a.m. to 10 p.m. Daily quota. Punishments. Mord's motto? Enough is not good enough. It's like a crazy loop, man. Mard wishes him success. Wild, huh? Hey, picture this. Joe's trying to sweet-talk the AI into setting him free, but the neighbor's like, Dude, save your energy. Survival mode on. Start working. So Joe's at it, struggling at first but he pushes through, and the mill starts moving. Mart, the AI, pops in to congratulate him on his first rotation. Virtual toast time for Joe's victory. He's listening to corporation ads while pushing that mill. Workday ends, and Mart's all, congrats Joe, you've completed day one of self-improvement. Exceeded the quota, top notch. Now, here's where it gets wild. Joe hears women screaming. Mord's announcing more dismissals, the neighbor, catching wind that Joe doubled the quota, gives him a heads up. Dude, slow down. There's a catch. If you're last after exceeding, it's game over. Don't spill your quota secret. Not friends here and competition's fierce. Climbing the corporate ladder, bonuses galore. They all did it. But then Joe, out of the blue, starts talking about his wife and their awaited kiddo. Neighbors like, work hard. Buddy, it's the only ticket out. But don't go overboard. Next day, knock on Joe's door. He's ordered to strip. He's scared but complies. Gets drenched under a stream of water. Returns to his chamber. Day two, weather scorching. Joe's feeling the heat. Asks the neighbor about the mill, their purpose here. Neighbor spills. They produce nada. Place is a void. Soon, Joe's out of water, tries to call the guard. But they're like, Urine's your drink, buddy. 
filtered through sneakers, no less. Joe's not thrilled, but the invisible voice is all. Mord knows best, pushing you to the edge. Lord wants to see you break. Joe's grinning away, remembering how his wife doubted him paying bills. He promised a better life for the kid. Evening comes, and Ward's taking notes. Wild, huh? All right, imagine this. Joe's hitting a new level of awareness. He spots a carved name, Alex. Curiosity kicks in, so he asks the neighbor, who paints Alex as this legend who escaped. Cool, right? Next day, Mard's all thankful to Joe, hands him a fancy pen, and drops a bomb. New daily quota, 370 laps. Joe's shook, frustrated, and lets the AI know in the most colorful language. But Mard's like, people miss their strengths, dude. Tough. But that's how the world flips. They hit Joe with a signal, and the mill's on again. But here's the twist. Instead of lap counts, crosses pop up, each meaning double laps. Joe's not backing down. He's pushing, pushing, and then some more. Neighbor spills the beans on Joe's crazy lap count. Furious Joe, arguing with Mal Lord. And now they're all in for it. Mar drops the bomb. Joe missed the quota, let down the colleagues. So, new colleague alert, Kate Stevens. Joe's world crashes when he sees his wife's face on the screen. Promises to outshine any plan to keep her safe. Mord gives him a day. Activates a glowing screen. No rest for Joe. Fresh work day. Joe's grinding the mill under Mord's orders for a productive day. Out of nowhere, he sees a second Joe, mocking his hopes. He's faced with failure. But stubbornly, he keeps pushing. Exactly at Tamog, 370 laps done. Mard cheers, cancels the penalty, shows images of Joe's wife with a baby. Tears of joy turn to sorrow. He missed his son's birth. Joe turns to the neighbor, desperate for info on this place. The neighbor, reflecting on his own kid, advises Joe to dig into the blind spot. Intriguing, huh? Hey, buckle up for this wild part. So Joe's done playing nice and decides to take matters into his own hands. He finds this mysterious spot on the wall, takes out that fancy pen Mard gave him, and starts poking around. Night after night, he's chipping away, creating a hole big enough to crawl through. But plot twist, he ends up in complete darkness, gets a nice tap on the head, and someone wishes him sweet dreams. Dude wakes up back in his chamber, hole sealed, and Mard's like, whom? Disappointed but one last shot. Joe's too obsessed though. His neighbor's punished, quoted now at a crazy 1,000 laps. Joe's neighbor spills the tea. They're controlled by a computer, first algorithm, self-improvement. You get the drift. Joe connects the dots. If they all stop, scores drop to zero. He spills the beans to the others, hoping for a rebellion. But nope, fear of death kicks in, and they're back on the mill grind. Joe's desperate, tries to persuade the others, but it's a lost cause. He's crying, picks up that gifted pen for comfort. Evening rolls in, he chats with the neighbor. Turns out his name's Alex. Both tried escaping, both failed. Mal Lord snatches at Lex. Morning brings Joe some twisted encouragement. Images of his wife and a baby walking. It hits him hard. Can't be in this nightmare for long. He lashes out, shouts at Mard, and bam, he's fired. Doors open. Clerks stare as Joe's left questioning everything. A uniformed man confesses he loves firing people, and Joe loses it. Beats the guy down. Mallard announces a failed mission for the guard. Joe's about to be promoted. He stands up, screams he's not a monster, and just like that, he's in an office, being congratulated for acing some career advancement simulator. It's a roller coaster, my friend. Hold on to your seat, my friend, because Joe's journey takes a crazy turn. So he peels off those suction cups, but his interlocutor is like, May, whatever, invites him to this flashy office in Mard. Tons of positions, a ladder to climb for years. They reach the floor, gadgets and all, but Joe's stuck thinking about the simulation. In this shiny office, he's promised a salary bump, perks, the whole shebang. There's a contract, though. Spill the simulation beans. Instant termination. Joe signs on the dotted line. Gets cozy assurances that Mard's his forever. Dude sits, 
checks out a photo of his wife, dials Kate. She's shocked, and he's on the brink of tears, spills out the crazy day. After a deep breath, he vows to burn this cursed place down. The movie tags itself as sci-fi, but every move Joe makes spills the tea on the harsh reality of the corporate world. People becoming work zombies, living to work instead of the other way around. It's a wild ride, my friend. Man, this movie is a trip. So Joe wakes up in this dystopian corporate mess, right? A crazy AI named Mard's running the show, enforcing brutal work regimes. But here's the twist. Joe realizes it's all a simulation. He's battling the system, chipping away at walls, trying to escape. The film dives deep into corporate exploitation, rebellion struggles, and the fine line between reality and illusion. It's like peeling layers of reality, leaving you questioning everything about work, life, and freedom. Intense stuff, dude. If you dig this wild ride, you gotta check out the full movie. Trust me, it's worth it. And hey, do us a solid hit subscribe, drop a like, and leave a comment below. Tell us your take on the movie or answer this. If you were stuck in a corporate simulation, what's the one thing you'd sneak in with you? Let's stir up some conversation.